Am I dreaming? And on this video tutorial, we're going to make an absolutely adorable, I'm not even kidding, pillow wrap that has Christmas trees on it that are made out of old sweaters. I'm doing mine all in my typical color scheme, which is cream. But you could do this with Christmas sweaters. You could do this project with flannel shirts. You could do this, this project with just about any kind of fabric uh, you would like. So be thinking about that as we're doing the craft. And um, so this craft is gonna involve some old sweaters. <laughs> and these came from Goodwill last year, actually. Look at this poor one. It had, um, it had bad stains on it. So I didn't feel bad cutting any of these up. Here's another one. <laughs> and then this is the one we're gonna do next. I have not cut this one yet. We're not gonna do the front because I'm gonna use that for its own separate pillow. But we're gonna cut some fabric out of the back. So it's gonna involve that. It's going to involve a pillow wrap, which in case you're wondering what the heck is a pillow wrap, um, a pillow wrap is something like this. This is like my current favorite pillow wrap. That I, it's sitting on the hearth in my family room. And um, when Christmas gets a little closer, my plan is to change this out for the one that we're going to make today. Anyways, a pillow wrap is a wrap that goes around the tummy of a pillow. And um, it's nice to not have to change your pillow covers all the time and just to be able to change the wrap. It's, it comes two in a pack. These are awesome. And then this is one of the Magnolia pillows, too. This is 18 by 18. It comes two to a pack. These are awesome. Awesome pillows. So it involves those things. Then I've got a variety of lace, um, some of my favorite buttons, um, uh, some uh, just... Uh, little bits and pieces. Um, and did I say canvas stuck? You're probably wondering, what am I doing with the canvas stuck? Okay, so, and I'm using my Sherbonder Cool Shot uh, fabric or, or hot gluing device. I'm using regular glue sticks that go with this one, not fabric, because this is not going to ever get washed. The first time you put this in the washing machine, it's going to completely disintegrate. Um, so I'm using the slightly less expensive regular glue sticks that go with the Sherbonder Cool Shot. And I had glue, so much glue on my hands this morning. You seriously do not want to use a hot temperature gluing device, but alternatively you could use, um, fabric fuse or a different kind of fabric glue. Okay. So the, um, pillow wrap is about this thick. Let me get my ruler. You guys are going to want to do this, and I'm going to want to see what you do, um, because I'm thinking you're going to definitely want to do your own spin on it, whether that's bright colors or muted like me. Okay, it's about eight inches from here to here. Okay, so the reason I'm using canvas duck is because the sweater fabric kind of pulls all apart, and you need to fasten it to something before you fasten it to your pillow wrap. So let's just take the back of this sweater. I'm gonna cut a square out. That first cut is hard. <laughs> Cause you're like, oh, well this isn't my size. And um, it does have some stains on it too, so. Anyways, yeah, I see a stain right here. Okay. This sweater especially wants to disintegrate on the edges. So this is what I started with, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have to kind of line it. Okay, so when you have a sweater that has something like this on the bottom, you can make that part of the design. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this in half. And then I'm going to cut roughly the shape of a Christmas tree. 
You can do fancy shapes if you want. I'm just doing straight, you know, diagonal. Okay, and I think that would be too tall for the um, pillow wrap. So I'm going to opt to cut up a little bit of the bottom, but I'm going to do that after we attach it to a piece of canvas duck. All right. And basically, all you're going to do is just use a, a good amount of glue. around the edges and even still we'll come back and probably add some more I have a bunch of them right here that I'm so excited to show you so stay with me and in case you are wondering um, you can get the pillow wraps, they come two in a pack, and the pillows, the pillow covers, they come two in a pack from my website, which is magnoliadiy.com. Okay, so let's, let's see, I think I want to uh, add a little bit more glue. around the edges because it seriously does want to kind of unravel. And maybe if you used Freycheck or one of those kind of products, you might have less of a problem with that. I'm just using old fashioned hot glue. It works fine too. And this pillow is going to be decorative. It's going to sit on my hearth and look pretty. Um, it won't be put in the bed or actually slept on. It's going to be one of those pillows that I would say don't touch because <laughs> it's too pretty. Okay, so now I have this thoroughly anchored on here and I'm just going to trim it and I'm going to trim some of that edge off that's already unraveling. We're going to see if possibly we want to stuff the little trees once we're putting them on our pillow. Let's cut off part of this band at the bottom because I think it's going to be too long or too tall. I'm probably going to have to come back and add a little bit more glue here. glue strings and bits of fabric <laughs> and sweater fluff everywhere. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I'm just going to look and see. Is there anywhere that I missed gluing? All right, here's a tree. Okay, so let's look at some of the trees that I have made so far. And I'm not sure if we're going to add this one in or not. But this, I think, was the first one that I made. And this was the one that I was like, oh, by golly, yeah, I'm going to have to have it lined. And you're going to have to be okay with there being a few strings. So that was one I made. This is another one that I made using that tan, more of a, a bigger cable net um, looking uh, sweater. And then here is another one that I used um, part of the back of a sweater and then this was the cuff. Can you see that? I'm just going to do, so I have all these little pieces. I've been busy this morning. Um, just play and look at this one. I have been having so much fun. Okay, and 
then here's another one. It's a little bit more finished. Here's another little one. And then look at this one. Okay, what do I have? Okay, I have eight pieces, which typically I would do odd numbers, but we'll see how this looks. Next up, we're going to jazz up some of these little pieces, and then I'll show you how we're going to put them on the pillows. So I have over here a whole bunch of different trims and laces and little bits of doilies that I've cut off of crochet pieces. I have um, a whole pile of small mother of pearl buttons and I don't know if we're going to use this but this is some of that organza kind of a creamy color so I have all this tan and taupe and cream you're finding it difficult to find a chenille bedspread in a thrift store okay Kimberly I looked for three years before I found this one and it was just a complete fluke because the thrift store that I go to uh, is a Goodwill. It's close to my house. They stopped having any blankets or bedspreads or even drapes for a good six months. And then all of a sudden they had them back and I just happened to be walking by and I was like, oh my gosh, is that chenille? So I, I bought a white chenille um, like a year ago at my local thrift store. Uh, it is hard. You can um, buy, buy pieces of, of chenille on Etsy. So try that. Okay, so I have a bunch of little things to dress some of this up. And for this one, I was thinking about just gluing this little piece of lace at the bottom. Alright, so let's do that. I need some more glue and I need a napkin to wipe off some of my glue strings. And like I said just a few minutes ago, this pillow is going to be 100% decorative. Um, it's not a pillow that I would put in bed or even that I would use to take a nap on the couch. Okay, so look at my fingers. I've got glue all over. This is proof, absolute proof, that you need a low temperature hot gluing device for this project. All right, now I'm going to trim off the bits where it's over the edge. We may add some buttons to that. We'll see. these I just want to do miscellaneous oh this one right here that's really kind of plain I took some little bits of Dollar Tree lace and just did crisscross crisscross glued them together and popped a button on there and I'm going to put that up here towards the top of this tree So tell me what you guys are thinking. And um, if you're liking this project and you think you have friends or contacts on social media that would like it too, I would love it if you would consider sprinkling this video to your social media. I'm pretty excited about this project. Okay, so I was gonna do that. And I'm like, I don't know how busy I want it to get just yet. But I think this one is plain and it needs it needs some of these little bits that I cut off of um, I cut off of some doilies.
and it probably needs a few little buttons. I know I have one more piece that's white. Where did it go? Hmm. So I never throw anything away at this point <laughs> because you just never know when you're going to want it. Alright, I'm going to do that. That works right there, and then I'm going to pop some buttons on the top of it. Part of this will be covered up when I start to layer everything. We'll do that next. And we may continue embellishing a little bit more, so I don't know for sure. This um, whole idea started out completely different than what it's ending up. I was just going to do um, some stuffed button trees, stuffed um, sweaters. Do I have any in here? I don't. I haven't pulled any of that stuff up, but that's what my plan was. And then as I was getting started, I was like, ooh, I want to do it on a pillow. And um, so there you go. And I can come back later and add more glue to that, but let's add some little buttons just on top of each one of those. I will be um, using my hair dryer to melt glue strings this afternoon because it looks like there's going to be about 10 million of them. Okay, see how much cuter it's looking already with those buttons on there? Okay, where can you get um, pretty vintage mother of pearl buttons. Most of mine have either come from like um, when I got extremely fortunate and I found a couple times I found uh, big uh, mason jars at Queen of Hearts that were um, that had buttons in them. And when I see something like that, I only buy it if it's mostly white mother of pearl because I have a thousand plastic buttons already and I don't need any more of those. So that's one place. And then I have bought some um, on Etsy. I bought some from a friend of mine who was a button dealer. <laughs> She's just an avid button collector and um, she will sell me some occasionally. Okay. And um, yeah, so, uh, but I also got a bunch of them from my mom. And maybe you are one of those super blessed people who inherited your grandmother's button jar or old box or tubs of buttons. I know sometimes at, um, at uh, auctions or when estates are being cleaned out you can find that kind of thing because people don't know what how wonderful a button is they really don't I'm always surprised um, so those are some places that you might find something okay I want to do a little something with this one but let's start by putting some of these on my pillow wrap first okay and then we'll embellish a little bit more. We may add that other tree. Okay, I want it to be in the center. So I'm just gonna fold this in half and kind of pinch the edges and that will tell me that that is the center. And I think I want this one to be the focal point.
What do you guys think? I'm so excited. I also need to get my little uh, lint brush out <laughs> to clean these off a little bit because they are so messy. So I'm just fiddling for a moment here. I think that's what I'm going to do, but I'm going to shift it all to, over to the side a little bit because I want my pillow wrap to um, to meet and close nicely. So can you guys see that? I'll turn it around just as soon as we get it attached. All right, if you just joined, we are making a beautiful pillow wrap out of old sweaters. I'm doing mine all in kind of cream because that's what my that's what my house is. I'm boring. I like cream and beige and tan and that kind of thing. But not everybody likes that. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that you could do this idea really in whatever color scheme you want. Okay, I'm going to start out with this little piece here because it's in the background. And I'm going to glue um, the top of this down. Well, let me think. I might need to glue this one down first. I'm going to leave the bottoms open so we can try a little stuffing. Okay, we flip over for a minute, mister. We'll do the, um, the stuffing to see if it's going to work after I get all of these pieces on. And if I can possibly remember what I had decided to do. Let's go this way next. If you um, don't like the idea of pillow wraps, which I think it's brilliant, um, before Magnolia started carrying this, I did a couple videos where I made my own homemade ones using um, canvas duck that I just tore the edges and then I made put my own Velcro on there and they were, they were fine, but they weren't great. These are so incredibly nice and so convenient to just change your pillow wrap out for the season rather than having to take your pillow cover off and change that whole thing every season. I already have way too many pillows so I, I'm excited about it and these are super nice and super easy to decorate and the color of them goes great with the magnolia pillows. They will fit an 18 by 18 pillow. They really would fit a 16 by 16, and they'll probably fit a 20 by 20 as well. Okay, I'm leaving all of the bottoms open. And I lined all of these sweater pieces with a piece of canvas duck. This is the one I just did. Because otherwise the, the sweaters want to stretch and um, they just don't, don't look nice. So 
they hold a little firmer and they're less likely to have the edges get all, all frayed up if you do it this way. I need another glue stick. So tell me in the comments what you guys think so far. Do you like this project? I'm loving it. I'm so excited. Um, I When I started this video, I was saying that these are my colors. This is my style, totally. But suppose you like bright colors. You could use bright colored sweaters. You could use bright colored scarves. Um, you could use a, um, a couple of flannel shirts. Uh, you don't have to do this whole neutral cream thing that I like so much. And um, this is just to show you how to kind of do the idea and get you excited. Um, and I hope you are excited. I am super excited. to start with this one right here and I'm going to do this the same thing of leaving the bottom of it open if I do end up stuffing these it will be a pretty small amount because I don't want these totally poofy but hopefully just watching this you are seeing that this is not hard at all and you are being inspired to do this kind of a project in your style and your colors or if you want to do it as a gift for somebody in their style or their colors. need to do this little one next. You think you put the little one on top? Well, it's going to be on top of this side and under this side right here. And I do want this to be kind of um, not symmetrical. Okay, so then this one is next. leaving all of the bottoms open. I know what you mean, you had a, a, a pillow, she's the, one of these people saying that she has a dog that was a pillow hound. My dogs will leave the pillows alone, but my sweet son and his wife, when they come over, if we're ever watching a movie, then they wanna put all my pillows on the floor and they want to lay on the floor in front of the movie um, and I'm like oh you cannot do that with this decorative pillow this is just for looking at it's not even for touching which is pretty much what this one is right here Two. did you guys see me do this one this was one of the um, craft club stencils from summer that was 
the stencils for Craft Club are exclusive to Craft Club, so here's my little plug for that. If you haven't joined yet, you really should because they are awesome every month. This was not a project in Craft Club. This was just an extra thing that I did with Craft Club. Um, and I love it, but that is a decorative pillow. It is not one that you would use. Okay, and I think I have everything else on, so let's do this one. And then I am seeing that we need some more little doodads, Judy says. Lots of luck. You go, Mama. Look, but don't touch. Well, we have plenty of, I mean, I have, okay. I have five pillows on my sofa. I have two pillows on the hearth. I have one pillow in my husband's chair and sometimes a pillow in my chair. And then I have a whole closet full of pillows and blankets. So there's plenty of pillows that nobody really needs to use my really pretty ones. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is going to be so pretty. Stay with me because we're going to keep going. Let's see, what did I just miss? Um, okay, thank you, Deb, for answering that question for me. I'm guessing somebody's asking, am I using the fabric glue sticks? That's a great question. No, I am not. And here's why. They are more expensive than the regular. I do use the actual Sherbonder ones, though, that go with this hot gluing device. But the ones for fabric are more expensive. And you really only need to use the fabric ones if you're making a project that's going to need to be washed, like a tea towel, and you're putting a ruffle on it, or a pillow cover that you were putting something on it, but you knew you would want to wash it. Well, this would fall apart if it went in the wash. So it will never be washed. And as I've said before, it will hopefully not hardly even ever be touched. Um, so, you know, I, I'm just frugal. I'm not going to use those more expensive glue sticks for something that doesn't need it, just because this is fabric. Okay, get some of that stuff off of it. Okay, tell me what you guys think. Start right there. What, I need to do some something here. I'm not sure it's going to be buttons, so it, because I have buttons right here. So, I don't know. I definitely need something here. I think it'll be buttons for that one. Let's do that. And then we'll look some more and see what else we can add. Um... Let's do some of these funky shapes. My favorite buttons are these little ones that are vintage Mother of Pearl. Those are totally my favorites. Ooh, this is a pretty one. Look at that. Nope, it's too gray. I have a that. Oh, oh gosh, you guys, I am so sorry. Okay, I think you're standing up. I had some lace under one of the legs on my little tripod here. Okay, so let me just quick, and I may finish this up off camera, but let me just quick add some of these little buttons, and then we need to figure out what I want to do with the top of that. Do I want to do some kind of a lace bow or something? Tell me what you think. What do I want to add to the top of this one right here?
have a thousand more beautiful buttons and I feel like maybe I want something that is going to be taller or bigger around. So I'm going to just leave it there for right now. And um, we could build a little something for the top of it. Oops. And I could use some of this. I could do a little something with this. this these are pieces of felt. Let's see how that would look. This was a little scrap of something that obviously I didn't throw away. Let's try stacking that up and we'll make a, a little bow. I'll put a pretty button in the center. I'm going to just go crisscross. Chris, and I'll hold it up. I'm using the regular low temperature Schirbonder glue. Because in my opinion, this is never going to get washed, so there's honestly no reason why it needs to have the more expensive um, fabric glue. That here. Yeah, that's going to be pretty. And I will get a bigger button. I get paralyzed in my crafts. <laughs> There's too many pretty buttons to choose from. Just find something that has a little carving or something interesting on it. Okay, that's pretty. Let's use that one. And it's covered, so it'll look, it'll get it a different look. And that will, that, I think that will make more sense. And I'll trim out, trim up the, um, the legs on this little bow off camera. Okay, here's what I vote. Let's try a little bit of stuffing. I will come back and finish um, dolling these up later. But I want to see what you guys think, if we should do a little bit of stuffing. And then I want to actually put it on that pillow to see how it looks. Okay, where did I put my polyfill? This is the polyfill that I like the best. Um, it comes from Walmart. It's Crafters Polyfill, and this specific one says it's ideal for doll making. And the reason why I like it a little bit better than other ones I've used is because it's stiffer. And it doesn't get smooshed quite so easy. I'm going to just tear these barbs up just a little bit some of this in here, get something to be a poker. Let's try this palette knife. I could have just, I don't have to stuff every single one, you know? I want a paintbrush or something to more evenly 
pushed up. Okay, so there's one. And then I would say, let's do this, try this one. And I'll hold it up. Thank you, Deb, for being my, um, <gasps> my uh, mouth and answering questions. I so appreciate you doing that for me. It, I tell you what, it's, it's hard enough to just craft and decide what you're doing while you're live. But then also it's a little challenging to also see all the questions and see what you're working on and formulate answers. So I so appreciate you. A lot of you guys have been around for a while and you know all the answers to <laughs> the most typical questions. Because I'm, I am a creature of habit and I tend to do things kind of the same over and over. Okay, I like those two. Um, I will be closing them up eventually. Let's try a little bit in this one. Maybe not quite as much. This is gonna be so pretty. And if I wanted, I also could put some, just some random buttons on here that might look like um, either stars or snowflakes. Okay, I like that too. Let's see if I add a little bit to this entry, what that looks like. I think if I did not line these with that um, canvas, uh, canvas uh, drop cloth, not canvas drop cloth, canvas duck, I think that you would be able to see the stuffing, sort of, and that wouldn't look very good. And also, I think um, the sweaters would just pull funny, so I think I'm really liking the fact that I decided to line each piece of the sweater. And I know what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to stuff them all with you here while we're chatting. And then I will take some pictures off camera. And you guys tell me, does it look okay? Because I'm kind of liking them stuffed. And I'm still thinking that I want to doll up a couple of these a little more than what they are. Because like this one especially, it has no dolled up factor to it at all. need to find something that will look unique. Oh my goodness, this turned out so cute. So stay with me for just a second and I'll hold it up. Um, don't you love it when you start a project and you're kind of like, this could go two ways. It could be really fabulous or it could be really not fabulous. I'm feeling like this is pretty fabulous. Oh and as it turns out, after telling you that I wasn't going to fill them super full, that kind of seems to be what I am doing. Not super full, but you know. This was... Um, this was three different sweaters that I used to make this one. They were all, all of these came from Goodwill. And they all, you know, sometimes if it's a nice sweater, I feel bad to tear it up. But these all had various stains on them. And they were not my size. But I don't feel, feel bad about using them to make something wonderful and just work around the stains. 
rather than sending it to a landfill because nobody's going to wear it. Okay. I'm going to get the pillow. Let's try it. Okay, this is how these pillow wraps work. They have two pieces of Velcro that are adjustable, that go, are on the back. And I would, at Christmas time, I would just tuck this away for spring or whatever and come back and um, put it back on my pillow later. It might be a little bit tight because I have stuffed all of those trees. And I love that it has, I could continue going further around it, but um, anyways, tell me what you think. Now that I'm looking at it on here, what I'm thinking is, since this one doesn't show very much, I might do something like that on this one. And that was just created with, what is it? This. This was just an uh, old doily that I had. It's got some spots and stuff on it. So I could do something pretty here. Anyways, I think I'll do something like that. And, or I could do it on this one. I don't know. I'm going to fiddle around with it. Anyways, okay, my comments have stopped moving. Oh boy, and there's a lot. So what I'm going to do when I'm all finished here is I am going to um, get a nice coffee and go sit in my comfy chair and get busy reading everything that you guys are writing. I want you to know that I do. And um, a lot of you, I feel like I know you because I see you on a ton of my videos and, you know, we're having a conversation. So feel free to comment, give me suggestions. Let me know if you want my supply list, which is going to include this pillow cover, the pillow wraps, um, the, you know, info about what kind of a gluing device this is, where can you get... Um, you know, bits of lace, where can you get uh, mother pearl buttons. So I'm thrilled. Um, oh my word, there are so many glue strings on here that I'm not thrilled with that. But I think it's going to be fabulous. And I hope that you enjoyed this video tutorial and that you saw how easy this was. Super easy. Um, and that it's inspired you that you could easily make something very similar to this for your home using your colors um, using Christmas sweaters in red and green if you want um, or bright colors or flannel um, so I just hope that it inspired you and you saw that it's really not hard alrighty well do it this or this, or say something to me in the comments, sprinkle, sprinkle, let me know if you want the supplies. I am going to go um, sit down and um, read some of your comments, have a cup of coffee, and then I will come back to this. Be looking later for pictures of the finished thing here in the comments, as well as just on DIY Dreaming. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and I hope the rest of your day is blessed and wonderful.